friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Zita. And on my channel, I do DIYs and makeovers on a budget. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Oakwell Home. So let's get started on today's DIYs and see what I've created. Today I'm participating in the third Thursday Thrift Flips hosted by the Rusted Willow, Rustic Chicks Designs, and Z9 Designs. So once you finish watching my video, don't forget to go in my description box and find the playlist for all the other amazing creators. So first I'm starting out with this cutlery box here that I thrifted and um, you can find these at the thrift store quite often. So uh, I cleaned it up first, gave it a good wipe down and uh, then I'm going to um, paint it up and I thought about um, taking the inside out um, and I have done that before because I have uh, upcycled these before and have taken the whole inside out is quite the job. So this one I thought I'm going to uh, leave it in and try painting that fabric. I haven't done that before so I thought I'm going to try that and I was going to take out that uh, portion that holds the cutlery but it was in there pretty solid so I thought if I knock that out it's probably going to mess up the rest of it so what I thought I'd do is cut some strips of wood that I had on hand some scrap wood that I uh, actually got from the wood pile at my local hardware store I thought I'd cut that down and I thought I'm going to paint those up the same color that I'm going to paint the inside and just cover that up and make it look nice. So I measured out my scrap wood pieces and made them fit in there. And then I uh, gave them a good sanding to make them all smooth with my um, sander there. And uh, once I have them all sand down, then I'm going to paint them up and I'm going to paint them the same color that I'm going to paint the inside of that box. And I'm using a uh, fusion paint in, um, I believe this color is midnight blue. It's a beautiful navy color. And I'm going to paint the red fabric the same color. And I hadn't painted fabric like that before, so <laughs> I thought I'd give it a try. So these sticks here, I'm using um, this little uh, tiny script stamp that I picked up on Amazon and I'll put that in my description box in case you guys want to order one for yourself and I'm using a white ink on it and um, that's just going to dress up these little um, you know scrap pieces of wood that I'm going to put in there just to make it look a little nicer and not you know just some scrap wood so um, I painted the inside with the same fusion color uh, paint and um, the fabric did soak up quite a bit of this paint so uh, I used quite a bit but it, uh, it worked out fine so I thought I'd try it and then if it didn't work out then I was gonna rip the whole thing out but it worked out uh, like I said I had to use quite a bit of paint to get uh, good coverage on this like you know to so no, none of that red color would show through. But um, yeah, like I said, it, it all worked out. And um, once I had the inside painted, I uh, started painting the outside. And I'm painting this with this blue color that I made up. It's a homemade chalk paint that I made from some acrylic paint that I had on hand. I just mixed a bunch of different blue colors and some white and if you haven't made homemade chalk paint before I'll put that in my description box as well I do have a video and if you've seen some of my recent videos you will see like a beautiful green uh, chalk paint that I made as well and I show you how I made that color in one of my videos so you'll have to go back and and uh, look at some of those so once my homemade chalk paint was dry and I painted the whole box in this color, the whole outside box, 
I applied uh, my Mod Podge on top of the box. But before I applied my Mod Podge, I gave it a light sanding to make sure it was nice and smooth and then wiped away that dust. And then I applied my Mod Podge. So I'm going to try the iron on method. So I let that Mod Podge dry overnight. And then the next day, I'm going to iron on my napkin. So I'm using this beautiful napkin here with some blue in it. And uh, now a lot of people will um, paint white underneath the napkin, but I just wanted some of that blue to show through. The napkin had some blue in it already. And uh, so I just kept it blue underneath and that way, you know, the blue will come through in the napkin as well. And uh, so I laid my napkin down and then I put a parchment paper on top of that. And now I'm going to use my iron and there's no water in the iron. It's not on a steam setting. It's just a dry iron with no water in it. I think it's on the uh, cotton setting. And then I just went over the whole napkin with my iron and smoothed that all out. And what the heat in the iron is doing is activating that Mod Podge again. So the napkin is going to stick to your piece. So this is a great method for pieces like this that are, you know, have a nice flat surface. And this way your napkin is going to turn out so smooth on top and it does turn out so so smooth <laughs> i just love this method so right here i'm using a polyvine um varnish and it's a lot thinner than mod posh so i kind of like this for putting on top and i'm using a really really soft brush here to apply it and yeah, like I said, it's a lot watery, a lot more watery than the Mod Podge. So I, I find this is really nice for applying on top to prevent uh, the wrinkles from coming through again. And I'm using a very light touch to apply this polyvine. And um, this polyvine, this particular polyvine that I'm using is in what's called the dead flat. So there's no sheen to it, which... I didn't want that sheen coming through on the napkin because my podge I find sometimes it leaves like a slight sheen to it. So the polyvine doesn't do that. So I let that polyvine dry overnight. You can, you know, it probably will dry in a few hours too, but I just left it until the next day and then I uh, smooth it out. Um, all, got all that excess napkin off with a fine sanding block. So I just went around all the edges. So now I am um, going to glue in these uh, painted scrap wood pieces that I painted earlier and stamped with my script stamp. So I'm just using some hot glue. I thought about nailing them in that piece, but I didn't. I just used hot glue and it worked fine. Just pressed down, on, pressed on it, and it has stayed in there nicely. And um, then I'm going to apply that top piece on there. And um, as you can see, it ties in nicely with the uh, rest of the painted fabric. So I didn't have to remove that piece, and you can just kind of lay your jewelry over there, or it just can be like. Uh, made into to make it look like you know there's two separate compartments so um now i thought this um box needed a little more so i'm taking my iod script stamp and this script stamp is you know the script print on it is a lot larger than that little script stamp i used earlier on those scrap wood pieces and i'm using a gold uh, ink here and that ink I think I got from the dollar store during Christmas the Dollarama um, which is here in Canada I don't think you guys have Dollarama in uh, the States and for all you viewers watching from other countries I don't, I'm not sure what kind of dollar stores you guys have or if you do have them 
And if you are watching from another country, please let me know if, if uh, your country has like dollar stores like they do here in Canada and the U.S. So I'm putting that script stamp uh, on the back, the sides, and the front. And um, I'm just kind of pressing in some empty spots. Now, uh, a little bit of the stamp in one area or a couple areas did kind of slide a little bit. So it, um, you know, it's not perfect, but it still looks beautiful. It's, you know, it's a handmade piece, so it's not going to be uh, perfect every time. But, you know, sometimes those imperfection make it look that, give it that much more character. Um, and the gold ink looks really nice on there. So now I'm going to let that ink dry overnight. Uh, friends, I can't say this enough. Let your ink dry because if you put wax or a top coat, whatever top coat you're using on top of your ink and it's not dry, it will smear. And I'm, um, telling you this because I know from experience from doing that I have if you've been watching my videos you will have seen me uh, do a project where I smeared the ink and I showed it to you because I wanted you to see that um, if you don't let it dry it will smear and then I'm taking that gold ink that I use on a stamp and use on the side of the box I'm uh, just kind of outlining the napkin on top to just tie it in with the rest of the gold uh, script stamp that I put on there and once I do that and get that done I'm also going to take some gold acrylic paint that I had on hand and I'm going to um, outline the uh, front and sides where there's a little crease there as you can see and just put some gold paint in there that's going to give it that little extra and this box i find with this color and the gold ink and that napkin that beautiful design on that napkin uh, it's making the box look very elegant i think uh, let me know in the comments what you think <clears throat> if you would have put the gold in that little creases now i'm just um putting some of that gold acrylic paint on my fingers and just going along some of the outline there and also taking it and um, painting the uh, knob on the front with the same gold paint. And this gold acrylic paint like dries almost instantly. I'm not sure what makes the gold so different from all of the other colors of acrylic paint, but this one dries almost instantly. And I'm also taking that same gold and kind of going along um, the edges on the top as well. And like I said, once all that's dry, I waited till the next day. I gave it a nice coat of clear wax and that was it. So this is what it looked like before. And here is the finished product. Let me know, friends, what you think of this beauty. I'm showing you here with some jewelry. Um, I also uh, tried some paper products in there. You can put cards in there. Let me know what you would put inside of this box. And let me know if you've seen a bunch of these at your thrift store. For my next DIY, I found these couple of uh, wood trays at my local thrift store. I think I paid like, I don't know, a buck or two for each of them. They're both wood, um, different kinds of wood. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to paint these up with my homemade chalk paint. And this is the green color that I was talking about earlier. And I do show you how to make that in one of my um, earlier videos. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to give these a few coats of paint. And I'm going to paint the front and the back. And uh, so friends, what what were these little dishes used for? This, let me know if you know. Um, 
were they just little serving trays or what or uh, I don't know but anyway they I'm gonna use them for a little jewelry dish or you can put them on your wall as well and I'm gonna show you how I uh, did both um, so once my two or three coats of chalk paint that I put on there once that was dry I did give it a distressing and I'm going to put some transfers on this. So I'm putting some of that polyvine on um, on these little trays first. Um, now some of the transfers say to put like um, a sealer on there before you apply your transfers. But most of the times I just apply the transfers straight to the chalk paint. Because I think with chalk paint they stick really nicely i haven't had an issue yet so let me know in the comments if you've tried transfers and if you've had any issues getting them to stick to just the bare chalk paint if you always apply a sealer first i don't but i did with these and um these are prima redesign transfers and i'm going to um cut out some of the pink butterflies here which goes really really nice with the green so this first one here I'm just kind of putting on a slant and uh, just kind of make it look more organic like it's flying away <laughs> and the transfers come with this little wood tool now some transfers come with a plastic tool so here I'm just trying to show you what it kind of looks like once you burnish it down with that tool. Like when you're lifting it up and you see if it's not all burnished down, just put it down again and use your tool to burnish it down some more and uh, it'll stick down. Um, and I kind of pull it back slowly just, you know, to make sure that it's everything's off. And then I use that plastic uh to burnish it down some more to just you know make sure it's on there good and i did the same thing with the other one and um now i'm going to apply a clear coat of wax on um, both of these on the front and the back and um once the clear coat was on there i do take out some black wax as well and uh, you'll see me do that coming up here and I put the black wet wax kind of around the edges of the trays just to uh, give the trays a little bit more dimension and um, almost like frame them out kind of so I just go around the edges and then I wipe back any excess with a cloth and uh, then I'm going to let that wax cure. Once the wax is cured, I am going to take these little uh, stickies that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Little Velcro stickers and you'll see coming up here. I'm going to show them to you. So one piece, you know, sticks to your piece and um the other piece sticks to the wall so they're great for little tiny projects like this you know that so you can still use it as a tray so yeah one piece is the velcro one piece is a sticky piece so that's just what they look like before and here's what they look like now aren't these beautiful and i love this color and i love the pink with the green so there's what they look like on the wall and here's what they look like with some jewelry in them so let me know, friends, what you think of these two projects today. Uh, I have included the videos of uh, both these projects at the end here. So um, stay till the end and just uh, give you a closer look with the videos. So I hope these two projects gave you some inspiration today. Let me know which one was your favorite. And I thank you so much for sharing some of your time with me today. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.